Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, May 25th. Okay, so we're gonna see the moon in Sagittarius energy go void, of course, at 10.47 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Capricorn energy at 11.36 a.m., again, Eastern Standard Time. So, of course, we're moving out of that full moon Sag energy. Of course, the transition from even normal Sag energy to Capricorn energy is always a little bit of a reality check. Why? Well, we're flying high in Sag energy we're dreaming big we're optimistic we're confident we're just kind of you know pushing our comfort zone pushing our thoughts pushing our feelings to the absolute extreme we're very hopeful very wishful and then that capricorn com energy comes in and says hey you need to come back down to earth okay if we stand a chance in hell of actually bringing some of these goals these visions these dreams to fruition into materialization then we got to get serious we have to focus on what needs to be done we have to get our to-do list together start wrapping up the let's call them loose ends of the past in order to clear the space and clean the slate in order for us to focus on what needs to be built what needs to be strategized what needs to be designed in order for us to actually succeed. So oftentimes than not, it does feel like we hit a little bit of a brick wall when the moon shifts into that Capricorn energy, just because of course it takes us out of our fantasy, vision, goal, dream, brings us back down to earth, sticks us in reality, and now we realize what we actually have to pour time, energy, and attention into in order to actually bring some of these goals, visions, dreams to life. So there is a seriousness that takes over with the moon in Capricorn because we're all business. We just want to get shit done. We just want to see some progress. We want to keep ourselves busy in order for us to not lose ourselves in the ever-changing landscape of our emotions. Now, to kind of give you a little bit of a perspective of why today is going to be even wonkier, not only is it the transition coming out of that full moon energy and kind of stabilizing it in that Capricorn energy, but we also have Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, moving out of Taurus energy that he's been in for the last year, and he's dipping his toe into this Gemini energy that you best believe is going to have a major impact on us as we kind of adjust and acclimate to this particular energy. Of course, there's an astral forecast out there for this particular event. You can open up your Gemini season e-guide to this event, kind of capture what's going on for you as well. And the May Zodiac forecasts are still available for download in order for you to figure out where this is taking place in your life, according to your sun sign and of course your rising sign. But nonetheless, we're at a 29 critical crisis degree in Taurus energy. So especially my fixed signs out there, y'all are feeling the funk, feeling the squeeze. We're definitely going to feel that alleviation, if you will, of pressure of energies lift once Jupiter actually shifts into this Gemini energy. But that will be early this evening. So we're definitely building towards an intensity. Jupiter tends to turn the volume all the way up, magnify whatever it is that we're thinking and feeling. And of course, the final degrees of Taurus energy we're all up in the physical form we're fixated we don't want to move we don't want to change and that's going to be a tug of war that absolutely catapults us in a time warp when Jupiter shifts into that Gemini energy because of course that's a mutable sign and we're all about change we're all about being flexible we're all about going with the flow so there's definitely going to be an interesting dynamic takeover here today and of course, I'm going to encourage you to stay up on the Ascension forecast, both for last week and this week coming, because it is definitely going to help you understand where the energy is manifesting in the physical form due to these energetic shifts. So with all that out of the way, we have a pretty d busy day in the cosmos. There's 14 different aspects. That's usually, you know, a little bit more than what it is that we normally deal with. And 10 of those being moon aspects. We're definitely all up in the let's call it inner realm of our emotions of our mental plane we're trying to find a new grounding spot definitely going to be much easier once we kind of move into that capricorn energy that earth energy is going to help us stabilize help us be a little bit more present and figure out what it is that we gotta do okay so 
the moon still in this sag energy is going to make a tough interaction with uranus the great awakener who of course is in taurus energy now this is going to bring about some confusion yeah of course we were sitting in that full moon sag kind of hoping and wishing for change and understanding where it is that we're reframing our mental plane our thoughts our feelings in order for us to feel stronger more empowered than we have in the previous days but this is creating a little bit of confusion. We are still focused on what it is, the big picture that we want to manifest, but we have no sweet Jesus clue on how we're going to get there. We have no clue what to be focused on, where to start. We have no clue what we should be doing at this point. We know that we need to be doing more than just, you know, living in our headspace and hoping and praying for a major change. We know that there's some kind of plan and strategy that we need to be kind of formulating at this point. But again, the starting point is a little bit confusing. That scattered energy coming from Sag has this kind of bouncing all over the place. It's hard for us to focus and concentrate. We're still trying to keep up the positive vibes, the good outlook, the good, let's call it, energy that we're trying to put into manifesting a better situation for ourselves. But we're not really seeing what it is that we have to do here in the physical world. We're not really seeing our options to move forward. And so that is creating a little bit of confusion, semi-delusion, if you will, because again, we do know that in order to manifest, work is going to be required from us, but we don't know where to start. So that is kind of setting the tone on where it is that we're hella confused on what it is that we're supposed to be doing. We're trying to stay hopeful and positive, but as far as the actions that we need to take, we don't know where to begin. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, now not in her rulership, because of course she just gave up that Taurus energy for Gemini energy just hours after the full moon in Sag reached its peak. Venus now in Gemini energy going to make a try and beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who was retrograde in Aquarius energy. A try means that we're working with like-minded elements. We have mutable air energy, the Gemini energy. We have fixed air energy from the Aquarius energy. So we have the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, and the great transformer himself working together to gently nudge us in the right direction. What kind of direction, you may ask? Well, first of all, we're going to have an intensity take over our mental plane, over our heart space. Why? Because we're building in passion, excitement, motivation, determination. We may have a particular focus. Maybe it's on a particular idea, could be on a particular person, situation, project, goal, vision, dream, whatever it is that we're conjuring up, whatever it is that we're excited or um, confused about, that could definitely take the reins as well. However, being a positive interaction, I would tend to want to say that we're focused on the good things to come instead of the situations that are currently alive and well that we're not really too keen on continuing. Nonetheless, major focus. We kind of intensify our concentration, our focus, because of course, Pluto, that's what he does. He intensifies things and gives us tunnel vision on what it is that we want to do, what it is that we want to build, what it is that we want to create. Well, We've had a realization as of late that we need to have more fun, that we would really appreciate kind of finding something in life that brings us happiness and joy, that brings back the pleasure, brings back the playfulness. Now, yes, we're very focused. This is Venus, of course, focused on wanting to be happy and having some fun and really enjoying ourselves. And Pluto is going to intensify us focused on the smaller pieces, if you will, that we have power and control over in the here and now that we could definitely be boosting, if you will, and turning the volume all the way up on creating more time, energy and space to have these energies again be anchored into the physical realm and a little bit on a more normal basis. And so, yes, we need to grow. Yes, there are some improvements to make. Yes, we could be making some adjustments, but we are definitely focused on where it is that, yeah, we're having some good ideas, but they're going to require us to have a little bit more patience 
than what it is that we currently have. So, you know, the Pluto energy comes in, helps us kind of intensify on the path to plan the strategy that we have to be kind of piecing together at this point in order to get to where it is that we want to be, especially where relationships are concerned, where money matters are concerned, and just bringing a little bit of playful energy back into the game. The moon still in Sag energy going to make a very awkward interaction with Mercury ruler of the mental plane in Taurus energy. So our heart and our head really not on the same page. We want to be on the same page. We're attempting to be on the same page. But at the end of the day, the moon in Sag has us very futuristically focused. Mercury in Taurus, on the other hand, has us focused on this present moment. So there's the disconnect there already. Um, we're also kind of struggling, if you will, to communicate our inner realm, thoughts, feelings, passions, desires in a way that is actually understood by the people that we want to express these things to. Not a huge breakdown in miscommunication, but at the same time, we're really not on the same page. We're not even on the same page within ourselves. So how can we be on the same page with the people around us at this particular juncture? The moon in Sagittarius energy going to get into the boxing ring square off with Neptune in his place of power in this Pisces energy. This is the last aspect that the moon in Sag is going to make before going void, of course, and shifting into that Capricorn energy. And so the moon in the square with Neptune, first of all, overwhelmed with thoughts, with ideas, with feelings, overwhelmed with the possibilities, with the opportunities of the future. We are picking up on the subtle energies of our environment, making it very confusing to identify what it is that we're actually thinking and feeling and really what belongs to us. Because again, picking up on the energies of the world around us, sometimes that is not our energy to own or to carry. And so we are having a little bit of a disconnect in our intuition. We are forgetting, if you will, what it is that this goal, this vision, this dream had us very excited to pursue. This is kind of when everything kind of feels like it's falling apart, but that's okay. It's supposed to as the moon goes void. 1047 a.m. We do see the moon move into its void, of course. We are going to watch a positive interaction with Uranus, which is bringing a little bit of clarity to us. Not much, but it's definitely digging us out of the confusion hole that we began here today in. And it's putting us in a situation where we're starting to consider where it is that we need to take a calculated risk, where it is that we have to be a little bit more open to switching things up to adopting new methods, new behaviors, to really just trying new things in order to create different results. The moon, while still void, is going to make a tough interaction with Jupiter. Jupiter, of course, rules over the Sag energy, was in his rulership over that full moon in Sag at the final critical crisis degree of this 29 degrees of Taurus energy. And right now, we are just feeling overwhelmed. We're actually not even feeling optimistic. We're not feeling hopeful. Hopeful. We're not really seeing the options and opportunities to move forward because as I previously mentioned, that 29th critical degree puts us in a state of paralysis. It's a fixed earth sign. So we don't want to change. We don't want to make a move. We just want to stand in our paralysis in this present moment. Therefore, not growing, not healing, not making any kind of changes. And that is really putting us in a funky town kind of mood. 1136 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we watch the moon shift into the Capricorn energy. This is when the seriousness is going to take over. This is where the negative narratives is likely going to begin. This is where we are going to have a major shift in our mood and in our attitude. About an hour later, we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, making a positive interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. So we're coming up with an aha moment here. And again, the minute that we move into the Capricorn energy, it's like business. We're putting our business hat on. We're like not messing around. We don't care about our feelings. We're figuring out very logically and practically what needs to be done. 
Like, what do we have to do here to wrap up the loose ends of the past, to clean the slate in this present moment so that we can start investing all of our time and energy and effort on kind of, you know, coming up with a plan on what it is that we're building, what it is that we need to create, what it is that we have to kind of rearrange in our physical realms in order to open up a space in order for us to build something new. So we're obviously coming up with something. There's some sort of aha moment here. Again, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane we're starting to figure out oh okay well not very comfortable in this particular situation so what can I do to resolve this I am not totally done with my to-do list that I had a week ago so let me go ahead and do that again the moon in Capricorn needs us to stay physically busy in order for us to technically detach from our emotions. A lot of the aha moments come at us when we're engaging the physical body and mundane tasks and chores so that we're not thinking about it. And then lo and behold, lightning bolt, suddenly something makes sense. So we're starting to kind of percolate, if you will, on an option on a choice point that we could definitely pursue at this point to not only wrap up the old, but to advance ourselves into the new. Mercury then goes ahead and semi-squares Neptune though, and this is going to be a tough energy because of course Mercury in Taurus energy is very focused on the present moment. We're looking for logic and practicality. We're very connected to our egoic programming, let alone our egoic avatar at this point. The Neptune energy and Pisces energy is all about our intuition, all about dreams and creativity and our spiritual part. And right now, we aren't really blending the two together very well. We are in Gemini season. It is about the division of self. It is about finding a sweet spot where we can integrate our intuition with our intellect. But we're definitely not there right now. And some of the intuitive insights that we've been receiving don't make logical and practical sense to our mental plane. Therefore, we're having a, a very hard time, I would say, to pour a lot of validity into what it is that we're feeling called to do and called to pursue. And so that just creates an element of confusion that, of course, doesn't help the cause in this present moment in the here and now. The moon in Capricorn energy then going to make a very positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, retrograde in this Aquarius energy, trying to highlight for us the old egoic programming, the old self-sabotaging patterns and behaviors that we have found ourselves in over the course of those tough love life experiences. We have Pluto wanting to kind of break down the old belief system, the old limiting thoughts, the Aquarius energy that Pluto is in wants to free and liberate us from those particular limitations, wants us to improve, wants us to do better in many different ways, starting with the ability to have a lot more power and control over our emotions. The moon interacting with Pluto in this way, definitely going to intensify whatever it is that we're thinking and feeling, intensify our long-term goals, visions, and dreams, intensify the want, need, and desire to figure it out so that we can get a plan together so that we can start actually advancing on those particular actions to get us away from where it is that we're at and closer to where it is that we desire to be. The moon in Capricorn then going to make a very tough interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money fresh in this Gemini energy. And so this is likely going to put us at odds with the choice points that we are having, not only in our head space, but in our heart space. Again, Venus in this Gemini energy, she's bored. She wants to go out in the world. She wants to find new things to stimulate her, to make her interested in life again. The choices that we're currently contemplating due to the major change of heart that we've had over the course of the last couple of weeks, definitely putting us in a tough position. Our heart and our head not on the same page. And of course, the moon in Capricorn would like us to avoid our emotions at all possible, which means that there is nothing but intellect left for us to kind of stew about. And again, a lot of the choice points that we have available to us right now may make more logical, practical sense than they do emotional or intuitive sense. But again, are we supposed to be allowing our egoic programming to take the lead or are we going to let our heart and soul take the lead? Again, that is still up for the power, for the control within us. 
7.14 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Jupiter moves into Gemini energy. Again, I'm going to encourage you to take a listen to the forecast to get your Gemini season e-guide out, capture the energy shift going on for you at this time, and to maybe re-listen to your May Zodiac forecast for this particular event. We sit in that energy for about two hours, and then the moon is going to go ahead and make a very harsh interaction with the sun. So the moon is in Capricorn energy. The sun is in Gemini energy. Earth and air elements have a very hard time getting along with each other because they are the furthest elements apart. Of course, the earth energy from the Capricorn energy is all about this present moment, our physical body, our physical environment, what we have power and control over in the present moment in the here and now. The sun shining a bright light in this Gemini energy has us divided in our mental plane on what it is that we should be doing. And if we're not careful, we're going to lose a lot of time and energy to the headspace and not really accomplish anything in the physical form. Anytime that the moon and the sun come together in any kind of interaction, there's a new aha moment. There's a new emotional awareness. And so as we're navigating these choice points, these dualistic and polarized decisions that we have on our plate through Gemini season, we get the opportunity to kind of see how that applies to our long-term goals, visions, and plans. That is the Capricorn energy that has us very focused on what we can do now in order to align us with our future vision, our future goals. The moon is then going to make a very positive interaction with Jupiter, who is fresh in this Gemini energy. And again, Earth energy and air energies have a hard time kind of meeting in the middle. Lucky for us, this is a positive interaction. So we are starting to kind of gain momentum with excitement, anticipation, optimism, seeing the ability to grow, seeing the ability to push the boundaries of our comfort zone. And of course, this isn't a dreamy, imaginative type of goal, vision, and dream. The moon is in Capricorn, where it is down to earth and realistic as we come. And so this is an energy building interaction, meaning our inner realm is thinking about our long term goals, visions and plans. Jupiter now magnifying the options available to us again in Gemini energy, likely very polarized, very dualistic in nature. But nonetheless, we are taking a very logical, practical, grounded approach to what it is that we want to build, what we want to create, what we want to bring to life over this next year. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Capricorn energy, making a very positive interaction with Saturn, who rules over the Capricorn energy. Saturn, of course, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, discipline in this Pisces energy has us kind of collapsing the old belief system, the old ways of going about things, the old structures that are still alive and well built by the old version of self that is essentially blocking us from creating the new goals, the new visions, the new dreams that we've been building in our inner realm. This particular interaction is just putting us in a very serious tone, but it's not like a harsh, serious tone. It's kind of like a down to earth realization on where it is that we're being called the boss up, where it is that we do have to kind of pour more time, energy and attention into wrapping up the old cycle in order for us to start new. And essentially it is showing us where it is that new roles and responsibilities are being kind of set out for us to step up into if we want to change our physical realm. Again, we can't just do the same old, same old and then expect anything other than what it is that we've already got. So this particular energy is kind of showing us what we have to build, what we have to create, where we have to have more willpower and discipline to do what we have to do to boss up into these new karmic chapters, boss up into these new roles and responsibilities in order for us to bring our long-term goals, visions, and dreams to life.